Time to cross the T's and dot the I's on the rest of the week's top stories. And with us now, Caroline Heldman, Associate Professor of Politics at Occidental College, Erica Payne, founder and president of the Agenda Group, and Fox Business's very own Liz McDonald. Oh, it's me against the ladies today. Well, let's start this with the turmoil in the Middle East. Oh, man, this week we saw those violent clashes uh, in Egypt. Which side is right? Abdel from Sacramento called into the radio show this week with his thoughts on the conflict, and he is our caller of the week. Well, first of all, let me ask you about the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. Good guys, bad guys, were bad guys, now good guys, what, are, what is it? A fundamental, and I hate fundamental. Doesn't matter what religion, I hate them. I do not agree with them. I did not support them. There is no book in Allah or book from God said kill or do this or do this against somebody. You have to live in a freedom like the United States of America. All right, Abdel, obviously, uh, formerly from Egypt, and he, you know, it's not only just Egypt. There's this the revolt in Tunisia. You've got Yemen, Jordan are changing fast. Syria is looking at another form of government. So will we? Will we even recognize the Middle East when all this is said and done? And Caroline, let's begin with you because I, I just feel like our, our children are not going to know about the Middle East that we know up until now. It looks like the whole region is about ready to change. Well, I would certainly hope so, Tom. Um, I think this is an historic moment where we will see democratic uh, movement throughout these countries. Uh, and, of course, there is the concern that it might put in uh, the Muslim Brotherhood or some other theocracy or Islamic government. But the fact of the matter is the people are speaking, and, and we in America have chosen leaders who aren't particularly great at various points, but at least it will be a democratic revolution. Well, and Liz... Uh... You know, we thought, well, democratic revolution sounds great until you start looking at what happened in Gaza. And we got Hamas, Iran. we got Lebanon, yeah. we got Hezbollah. So, so our view of, of uh, democracy isn't working out all that yeah, well that's, so far. Yeah, that's right, Tom. Revolutions, for, for now, Caroline makes important points here, but they tend not to end well in the Middle East. We all want democratic change. The issue is, is whether these governments have the infrastructure at the government level to support democracy. And we have not seen that so far, evidence of that so far, in places like e Egypt, which is a U.S. ally. And the issue is, will the Muslim Brotherhood come into power? And, and then what matters for the markets right now, what I'm watching, is we see governments around the world starting to hoard things like food and grains. And that's causing price spikes there. So there is a fear that food price spikes could lead to unrest, oh, yeah. as it did in Tunisia. But the point being, will uh, 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 regimes that come into power support the U.S. And, and back the U.S., especially the one democracy, full-fledged democracy in the Middle East, Israel? Yeah, Erica, is this, uh, this, this seems like this is a historic watershed moment for a huge section of the world upon which we rely. Right. I think it definitely is. I mean, you're seeing young people come out and say that they want to have the same freedoms that we have here in America. So the freedom to find a find a job, to speak politically the way that they want to. And so this great uprising, the question is, what are we going to do with it? And are we going to help usher it in in a calm and orderly way? Or are we going to continue to support dictators who repress their people? Yeah, it's, it's still got long ways to play out on all of this. Let's move on. We've got green appliances. How are they working for you? Started off years ago. Remember those uh, low flush toilets that you have to flush twice? The green light bulbs came out. They're not as bright. I don't care what they say. And now, have you heard about your dishwasher? It's not clean as well. It's because of the fact that they were forced to take phosphates out of detergent. And it's the phosphates that make your dishes clean. So, Erica, we'll start with you. Uh, if, if, I haven't noticed it yet, but I just checked my box uh, of Cascade, sorry, right. but, uh, and it says no phosphates. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, as a, as a woman who's post 40, I'll admit, I can't stand the light bulbs. It is not, it's not good lighting for women. But I mean, this is one of the trade-offs. You know, I would rather have that and have healthy kids who don't has, have asthma. You know, global warming leads to things like um, more mosquitoes, more malaria, more disease, all of that. So, you know, do, would I rather look good in some warm lighting? Sure. But is the trade-off there? I think probably. <laughs> all right, Caroline, <laughs> where, have you, how's, how's your di how are well, your dishes? Are your, are your glasses clean? 
You know, I'm, I'm a hand washer myself uh, when it comes to dishes, but the only report I was able to locate on this came from the Department of Energy, and they actually found that the difference is not green appliances or non-green appliances in terms of effectiveness. Um, it's by products. So there are some great green products out there and some less great green products. And I would agree that we really do need to make some shifts in our lifestyle if we're going to respect the fact that humans will be here in 50 to 100 years. Uh, if we want to respect our children, we need to make these changes. All right, uh, Liz. I've, uh, when I do this subject on my radio show, I get the I get the service man calls. Uh -huh. They call and they say, "I'm telling you, those washers and dryers they don't do as good of a job as they used to." Now we got this dishwasher thing going on. Yeah, and who knows if they'll be uh, you know economically viable, and you won't need to call the service man in to get to fix them. But this is of a broader piece, Tom, with the idea being that green jobs are uh, great jobs. We need productive jobs in this country. In other words, uh, America's t cash register, the U.S. taxpayer, is often called upon to provide uh, taxpayer-backed subsidies for these companies that make these appliances. Look, I'm all for better and cleaner energy. We all want that. But for the interim, it can be very expensive. It's very expensive, no question about it. And uh, again, I'm, I guess we'll be running our dishwashers twice. It doesn't seem to... What's the point? Anyway, how about uh, to say the country's been hit hard with uh, massive winter storms? And freezing temperatures is an understatement. It's got all of us asking, what is going on? Uh, Al Gore says he's got the answer, and it's global warming. A lot of people snicker about it and say, global warming, we're up to our kneecaps in snow. And what he wrote in his blog was this. He said, scientists have been warning for at least two decades that global warming could make snowstorms more severe. Snow has two ingredients, cold and moisture. Warmer air collects moisture like a sponge until it hits a patch of cold air. Temps go down below freezing. A lot of moisture creates a lot of snow. Liz McDonald, you buy Al Gore's explanation? Well, uh, you know what? The, the, uh, the planet's uh, climate system is so complicated. Look, I do agree that there's climate change. I know that we've had a mini ice age every 100,000 years or so. I don't know if it's solar flares or what is causing uh, you know, the issues here on our planet. And, but the problem with this whole debate about global warming and climate change is trying to get the both, both sides of the aisle, the opposite sides, to agree on something. I feel like if you try to do that right now, it's about as easy as trying to get a, uh, rather to teach yeah. a cat to bark. You yeah. know, it's so hard to get these two sides to agree or have any consensus in what the issue is. Erica, my point on this is that scientists, so many of them now, are bought and paid for. Sorry, but, it's, but, they, but they are funded by somebody who has an agenda. Well, I think you Both sides. How do we get a, how do we, why can't scientists give us a, an honest answer? Well, so almost all scientists in the country believe that there is global warming. The question that we have to ask ourselves is, you know, are we going to talk about one degree that the, the climate goes up one degree? We have had the hottest 10 years of the last 10 years over the last 10 years on record. Okay. Yeah, but it's starting to cool. So, again. well, th that's not what the scientists would say, but I'm more concerned about that effect on our health. You know, so it's one thing to talk about the, the planet warming. It's another thing to say what's happening to asthma levels. You know, what's happening to the air that we breathe and the water yeah, that we drink. We, uh, can we do anything about it, Caroline? Is, the real question seems to be, uh, is it man-made or not? And, and that's where the scientists disagree. Well, I would, I would argue that uh, there's actually very little disagreement. What we have are a couple of uh, scientists who are breaking rank for political uh, and economic reasons. Um, I think that the fact that global warming exists is really evident because we have four times the number of climate-related disasters in the past 10 years than previous decades. That's not, a random, that, that's not a random statistic. Something is happening here, and we're seeing it affect crops in Russia. Uh, we're seeing tsunamis. We're seeing snowstorms, all of which are related to global warming. All right, we'll have to leave it there, but uh, the global warming thing is, is not going to be a debate that's going to end soon. Caroline, Erica, and Liz, thank you all thank very, you very so much. much. Appreciate it. Try your luck at Comment Roulette. Email your thoughts to Tom Sullivan Show at foxbusiness.com.